Well, welcome to this, the fifth and last uh, episode of Have You Seen the Supernatural Power of God Lately? I hope you've enjoyed uh, getting together, maybe with one other person, maybe with a group. Maybe you formed a new group. Maybe you're with a group you've been with for some time. But I hope this has been helpful uh, to you. We've been talking about how can we experience God's supernatural power in our lives today. Uh, Dwayne Miller's greatest joy was preaching at his small church and singing worship songs. Uh, it was not only his livelihood at his church in Brenham, Texas, but it was his passion, his joy. He woke up one Sunday morning with the flu and his voice was totally shot. Uh, the flu eventually got better, but still his voice was just a, a raspy whisper. He had no voice. Um, so he essentially couldn't speak anymore, so he resigned from his church. Then he got a job, uh, a government job, uh, researching records. But he lost that job, too, because he couldn't testify in court as to his findings. Uh, that's when he first began to feel useless. He had uh, medical bills piling up. He had no job, no chance of a job. And he had no future, no income. And he was really lost. So he saw 263 doctors over the next three years. And uh, he was even uh, seen by a symposium of Swiss doctors and doctors from around the world, some of the leading experts on throats. And they said that the flu had fried his vocal cords. They uh, uh, you know, burned off the nerves. And uh, when he asked what is his prognosis for recovery, they said zero. Uh, his church in uh, Houston, First Baptist Church in Houston, invited him to come speak at their Sunday school class. They loved him. They loved his teaching, and he protested, but they gave him a microphone so that they could hear his, amplify his voice, and uh, they agreed to, to endure his croaky voice for a half hour. Uh, he was speaking about Psalm 103. There where it talks about God heals all our diseases. As he read that verse, he was thinking in his mind, yeah, I believe God heals all our, di our diseases, but then he thought, but why hasn't he healed me? Then he read the next line, which says he, uh, he rescues us from the pits. And he said, you know, I've had pit experiences, you've had pit experiences. But when he said the word pit, his voice didn't catch. He said it clearly. And... The crowd realized that his voice had come back and he realized he could hear his voice for the first time. And so the class started erupting in laughter and clapping and shouting. His wife uh, exploded in tears. Uh, one of the students uh, videotaped uh, his, his speech on her cell phone and so it went viral. And uh, so his case was talked about widely around the country. Uh, when he went to see the doctor, the doctor was shocked. There was no sign of any vocal cord problem, and there weren't even any signs of scar tissue. The doctor said this, even if I could explain how you got your voice back by coincidence, which I can't, I could never explain what happened to the scar tissue. Well, today, uh, Miller is pastor of Pinnacle Church in the Cedar Creek area of Texas. Uh, ironically, he hosts a daily radio program where he speaks. His voice is it, uh, telling people that he believes God is still in the supernatural power business. So what do you think? You think this is an exaggeration? You think this is an unexplainable medical anomaly or a divine intervention from God? Uh, I believe this is a miracle. The pastor is still alive. He's telling his story. The doctors have the medical records of what his voice looked like before and after. Uh, Lee Strobel uh, commissioned a survey in 2015. He asked George Barnard to do it, and he found that 94 million Americans believe they have had a miracle, something like this, happen in their lives. God is still in the miracle business. 
How can we experience more of God's supernatural power in our lives? I think we need to open our eyes to the possibility that God is still doing supernatural miracles today. But the problem is many of us are embarrassed by the supernatural. I think many believers are just kind of shy about it, uh, have a hard time believing miracles like these happen. And if something happens to them, they're reticent to share that with other people. Why do we do that? Because we want to fit in. We don't want somebody to think we're weird, that we're uh, you know, like a televangelist or a faith healer, and we're way out there. And so we just kind of have a, we have a kind of an embarrassment about the supernatural. So why don't you pause the video? I want you to ask that question. Are you embarrassed by the supernatural? Uh, do you tend to shy away from it in your own life? All right, welcome back. I want to take you to 2 Kings 5 uh, today, or 2 Kings 6, actually. We start at verse 8. Now, the king of Aram, this is Syria, was at war with Israel. After conferring with his officers, he said, I will set up my camp in such and such a place. The man of God, this is Elisha, sent word to the king of Israel, beware of passing that place because the Arameans are going down there. So the king of Israel checked on the place indicated by the man of God. Time and again, Elisha warned the king so that he was on his guard in such places. So in a war in which Syria was constantly attacking the Israelites, the king of Syria would make his plan for where they were going to attack next, but Elisha would warn the king of Israel, and they would always have forces there. And so the king of Syria was constantly frustrated. This enraged the king of Aram. He summoned his officers and demanded of them, Will you not tell me which of us is on the side of the king of Israel? None of us, my lord, the king, said one of his officers. But Elisha, the prophet who is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the very words you speak in your bedroom. It enraged the king of Syria that every time he planned an attack, it was thwarted. Uh, and so he sent a sizable number of troops to go capture Elisha. Go find out where he is, the king ordered, so I can send men and capture him. The report came back, he is in Dothan. Then he sent horses and chariots and a strong force there. They went by night and surrounded the city. When the servant of the man of God got up and went out early the next morning, an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Oh, my Lord, what shall we do? The servant asked. Don't be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed, O Lord, open his eyes so he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around. Gehazi was afraid when he came out early in the morning and they were completely surrounded by Syrian troops. So Elisha prayed that Gehazi's eyes would be open to see God's forces, and he did, and he saw uh, flaming chariots of fire and all, all God's angels around. We need to open our eyes today to see the supernatural power of God, the unseen forces of God that are in this world. So that's about all I have to say today, and I want you to discuss now, are you open to the supernatural power of God, to the unseen powers of God that are all around us? Uh, take your journals, if you've got those, and uh, share your answers. Uh, if you haven't filled those out, there's nothing wrong with on the spot. Uh, taking your Bibles, your, your cell phones, and, and filling those in and, and sharing your answers. And then pray for each other before you go. Uh, some of you need some supernatural miracles in your life, so don't be afraid to ask for those. It's always right for us to ask. Thanks.